Okay, who is Robert Galen Sr.? Well, he's born in Big Lake, Texas, and holds a B.S. degree in industrial engineering from Texas A&M University. While active in engineering, he was licensed professional engineer in the state of Texas and national certified manufacturing engineer. After graduation, he accepted a commission of the second lieutenant, later promoted to first lieutenant in the Army Security Agency, a branch of the NSA, which is a big brother of the Central Intelligence Agency. Military training was in the field of crypto analysis, the breaking of codes, and he served as a company commander with the intelligence unit on the demilitarized zone DMZ in uh, the Valley of South Korea from 56 57 after fighting had ceased. Upon leaving active duty, he began his professional career in the petroleum industry, serves as an industrial engineer for 10 years upon being promoted into management and was a manufacturer plant manager for 10 years. The past 17 years, he served as international management consultant working in U.S., Japan, Mexico, Canada, England, and Iran. He's advised some people in the Japanese government. After completing the Manuscript is first book, Who's Who of the Elite. He uh, contacted a number of publishers and, again, went ahead and self-published and now has RIE, uh, his own publishing company. And for RIE.com is the website. Robert Galen Ross, great to have you here in studio with us. With you, Alex. It's uh, fantastic having you here with us as well. Okay, uh, just in a nutshell... Let's talk about how the banking system works, fiat banking. Some of your books cover that. We carry them at InfoWars.com. Kind of dovetail it with your other work, the murder of JFK, RFK, MLK, how they murder people. We've had four big CEOs killed the last 48 hours. The head of the Rockefeller Families Corporation was clearly murdered. Uh, and then what their master plan is. If they're able to bankrupt the planet and bring this system in, if they're truly able to be successful, we know world government's just the beginning. What will the world look like if they were able to get everything they wanted? So good to have you here with us. I appreciate that. Uh, the, what their goal is, uh, is to create the new world order or the global union. And the uh, once they do that, it'll be sort of like in the medieval time when uh, the kings would uh, live in their castles and uh, in order to visit their friends in the other castle, they'd have to have a, an army to uh, escort them to the next castle because the peasants were out to get them. And uh, we're going to end up with uh, kings and paupers all around the world. And there won't be any middle class people there. They're, they're going to eliminate the middle class. But in, in order to stop this, uh, I've in my book, uh, I have uh, set up a timeline for stopping them. Uh, and the first thing is we need to uh, correct our voting system. We all know that our voting system is corrupt. Uh, and so once we straighten that out, and the only way to do that is to go to a paper ballot uh, counted by uh, members of the local community. And once the uh, uh, count is made, then it must be posted in a local newspaper before it ever goes to Washington or wherever, so that they can't juggle the numbers once uh, once the results are finished. And we've got you for over an hour, so I want to okay. get into that uh, in the second part. Get into solutions, get into your new book, Hot Off the Presses, what the elite have done to America and how to fix it uh, by Robert Galen Ross Sr. But starting out, because we have a lot of people, a lot of new listeners every day now, the show just gets bigger and bigger, uh, thank God we're reaching more people because so much of what we talked about has come true. Describe how fractional reserve banking works, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, what we're dealing with, and then currently your take on, because you're right, the Club of Rome is brag, CFR brags, they want to bring in neo-feudalism, neo-serfdom. They want to bankrupt the world. They want to go to a post-industrial system where the armored government compounds uh, in, in the countryside are where the elites live. They will have life extension technologies. They will have access to high tech. We are going to be put into a level of squalor, degradation, one-child policies, really kind of roving government systems uh, that keep us in check and the orderly extermination. But, but, but specifically, how these banking families got their control and what their master plan is. Yeah, they've developed techniques uh, in, in their money science. Uh, for example, the uh, the reserve system. Uh, a bank is required to keep 10% of their capital in reserve, and then they can loan out 90%. So let's say that you 
uh, deposit a thousand dollars in a local bank, they can turn around and and loan out nine hundred dollars of that to someone else. And let's say they loan it to Joe, and Joe immediately puts into his checking account or savings account. Then they can loan out ninety uh, percent of that. So as this keeps going from one to another, one thousand dollars can create nine thousand dollars in new money, and that's the fractional reserve system. And it's done uh, to uh, uh, so that they can loan this money out at interest. Continue breaking that down for people. I mean, in layman's terms, they get the license from the government, the authorization to just be able to make up money, make up liquidity, and then they buy up their own assets. They buy up uh, products and industries. And then they got rid of the Glass-Steagall Act of 99 that allowed investment banks to become normal retail banks. And so they just directly gave themselves unlimited money and broke free of the chains of just the fractional reserve banking that already allowed them to take over the economy to just unlimited unlimited funding. And so they've now created tens of trillions of dollars more uh, fiat currency than there even is real assets. That's correct. And, and the... The Federal Reserve creates money out of thin air, uh, and most of the money they create is done by electronic means, by just a computer entry into their database. And if they print new money, it costs somewhere around $35,000 for a pallet load of, say, $100 bills. That's all it costs them. But that pallet load may contain $5 billion worth of money. So that uh, the cost of printing the money is, is nothing to them. I've talked to economists because they haven't published these in about a decade. A decade ago, for every billion dollars of fiat currency on, on, on the computer books, uh, well, well, there's roughly 3% paper money or coin money for every uh, dollar that's out there. But I've been told it's even less than that, down to about 1% right now. Uh, so it's not just the print money. It, it's just all this fiat made-up money. Yeah, it's the electronic money that uh, that's that's most of the uh, M3 money supply is made up money, made up out of thin air, loaned out at an interest. So people will kill each other. People will cheat their parents. People will do anything for some Federal Reserve notes, and it's all just made out of nothing for a handful of uh, private families uh, to be able to literally own the planet. That's right. And you, then you have somebody like uh, Bernie Madoff that uh, uh, he he really soaked his own friends. He took all their money and said he was going to invest it, and and turned out he didn't invest any of it. And it was a Ponzi scheme where he paid his uh, the dividends of his customers off the money of of other people, and he got up some like seventy uh, sixty five billion dollars he loaned out and. Of course, now he's spent 150 years in prison to do the, for doing that. Well, and he created the NASDAQ. I mean, this is one of the high-level right. guys. And uh, it's been reported that the same stuff he's doing, that all these major firms do this. But uh, if you look at the uh, uh, derivatives and credit default swaps, uh, that is a Ponzi scheme in itself. And in my book, uh, I, I, I give the amount of... Uh, derivatives and credit default swaps that each bank owns, the, the largest ones. And Chase Webster Tarpley says it's 1.5 quadrillion. Is that accurate? Uh, that's total derivatives, yes. Now, the, the banks don't have that. They have about one-fiftieth of that in assets. For example, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank has uh, oh, something a little over $1 trillion in uh, in total capitalization, and they've got uh, 54 times that outstanding in derivatives. So that's a Ponzi scheme. We've got a break. Let's come back and talk about what their master plan is, because they're bragging. They want a new bank of the world out of all this, out of the crisis they created. Then we'll talk about solutions with our guests. When looking at your...